But now we turn our attention uh, to a story that's got a lot of attention uh, over the last day or so. St. Cronin School in Bray are pleading with the Minister for Justice to stop the deportation of nine-year-old Eric Xi Ying Zhu, who attends fourth class at the school. The online petition to help Eric has gathered about 33,000 signatures at this stage. They're hoping to get up to 35,000. Looking at how fast they're growing at the moment, they will get to that, no problem. Minister for Health Simon Harris has contacted them and said he's going to be assisting them in their efforts. To discuss all of this, I am joined on the line. I'm delighted to say by Mrs. Maeve Tierney, who's the principal at St. Cronin School in Bray. And Maeve, you're very welcome to Lunchtime Live. Thank you very much, Karen. We'll, let's go back to, we'll talk about Eric in a, in a moment, but just in terms of, uh, of this, the current situation, when did it all start? Well, it's, it's not easy to answer that. Um, I suppose it started with Lena's arrival in the country, which uh, was in 2006. So it, 12 years ago, she arrived here and she did arrive here illegally. There's no dispute about that and there's no dispute about her status in the country. Our issue is with uh, her child who was born in 2009, born in Ireland, never left this country and uh, is not an Irish citizen. So he has been served with a deportation order, obviously, because of his mother's status. And we believe that he is an innocent victim in all of this. And when, when was the deportation order? The deportation order was issued in 2015, just three years ago. Okay, and, and why then has there been a delay from 2015 to now for this to become we're, we're, an issue? We really don't know, to be perfectly honest with you. Lena, has been, Eric's mother, has been requested to go to the immigration office every single month uh, in the intervening three years, uh, which she's done, and each time she's asked to come back the following month. So we don't know why that has been the situation. But in the meantime, I met her two years ago, and she confided in me and told me her situation, and she found this very difficult to talk about but she needed she desperately needed help by then because she found it so difficult to deal with our system and I agreed to give her some advice if I could and put her in touch with a, a solicitor friend of mine mm. and so it went from there and eventually unfortunately every avenue legally was exhausted in our case and she was eventually issued with um, a final order just three months ago in June to say that she would be deported uh, despite all of the appeals that were sent in and this week, yesterday morning actually, she was in the immigration office with the child's passport as request, or not his passport, he doesn't have one, his birth cert and uh, was told that um, they would be preparing travel documents for him and for them both to leave. Okay, so this happened. So it did three years ago, the case, and then it kind of rolled on month to month, not really knowing what was going to happen to them. Um, uh, various legal challenges. And then really it's just in the last week or two that essentially this is kind of, or well, since June, and then and then really climaxing the last week or two where they're told, look, travel documents. The reason for this is because, and again, it was on, on foot of advice from her immigration lawyer that really they had exhausted all of the avenues and that really there was nothing else for us to do at this stage except to appeal, appeal to the minister. Um, and to use his discretion in this case. And that's obviously something that, that, that you're doing. I mentioned the petition. What, what has been the reaction amongst, uh, amongst locals there in Bray and amongst Eric's classmates and the parents of his classmates as well? Well, we know that this is not exactly... Uh, this is an issue that is controversial. We, we're well aware of that. We're well aware of the, the law around all of this. But I have to tell you, Karen, that we have been so completely overwhelmed by the hugely positive support that this has received from our whole school community, from everything. Every, parents have come to me, children have come to me, so many people have come to me and just said, well done, this is really a, a great thing to do for this boy. It's very wrong that he should be sent uh, to China, a country that he does not know, and to be deported like this uh, because of something over which uh, he had no control. Yeah, I, I think that it's important to emphasise that just for people to think maybe that you know, w w when Eric's mother came here that she had Eric with him. Eric was born here in yeah. 2009. Right. He, yeah. He, yeah. he is born and bred in Ireland. That's right, that's right. Yeah, born yeah. in Holland Street. Um, uh, he has never left the country. He has been completely and is completely integrated into our society, to the community of Bray, to our school here. He's learning his Irish. He's doing all the other things that every child in this school is doing. Unless you take a, a kind of a very a backwards approach to, to, to kind of the nationality that's based on bloodlines, Eric is as Irish as anyone who's sitting in the classroom with him, I assume. That, that's exactly what I would be saying. That's, the, that, that, that's our view, and that's the view of the school, and that's been the view of all the people who, who have approached us. Now, I appreciate, look, that, that they're, they're very young, his classmates. Do, do they have any comprehension or, or what, they must have some, but what level of comprehension yes, I mean, they do they have are, of what's they are going nine on? years of age and you don't underestimate the intelligence and the ability for children to understand and at the same time 
we have provided them with uh, an understanding of what's happened because they've been asking questions. They've been aware of, of all of the issue and the publicity around this case. So their teacher, um, Neve Corkery, spoke to the class and um, she just very briefly explained to them what was happening and they found that very shocking. They're very shocking. I mean, it is a terribly terrifying thing to hear that this is a possibility of something like this happening to a child in your class. And how is Eric in all of this? Eric is an extraordinary young man, I should tell you. Um, he really is. He is so self-contained. He is so mature and so well-adjusted. But he's also very stressed. This is a very stressful situation for him. And it's been... It's, it's a great risk, you know, to have his image posted there, to have his mother think about the, the um, meaning of that and the fact that, it, you know, for such a private person, this has huge, been a huge difficult situation and a decision for her to take. But she felt that ultimately she had no option. So she's been, she has agreed that this is the best um, strategy. Nonetheless, you know, we just hope that people will respect their privacy as well, as well as support them, if you know what I mean. Mm. So... We can't say that this is not going to have an impact on him. We just hope that people will understand that uh, this is for his good, and he understands that himself, insofar as that's possible, you know. And, and what is the process from, from this point with the petition where you're, where, where you're lobbying the minister, essentially, to, to use their discretion? That's right. Yeah. Do, do you then, is it you to present the petition and just uh, his discretion, can, can, he, can, he can choose to exercise it at, at any point he wishes, or, or is there a kind of a formal process for this, or, or what happens now? Well, we're very new to this as well, Karen. We haven't <laughs> been through this situation before, so I don't have an answer to that. All I can say to you is that uh, I have been speaking to Minister Simon Harris, and I've also been speaking... And he's, he's supporting you, isn't he? he? He is supporting us in that he is going to take this to, to the Minister, Charlie Flanagan, and that's as, as much as, as at least we'll see how what happens, because we don't know. Uh, obviously, there are lots of constraints involved in this, and we understand that, but this situation really needs to be resolved. Yeah, look, uh, people are wondering, people are getting in touch on 53106, wondering uh, how do they access the petition? Uh, how do they, if people want to sign it? Yeah, they can go to, well, the simplest thing for people who don't have Facebook or whatever, which is it, to go, if they can go uh, to our website, www.stcronans, so it's stcronans, C-R-O-N-A-N-S dot I-E, and you'll find the link there on our homepage. The Facebook page is on our homepage, and you just click into that for the petition for Eric. All right, listen, uh, we, we wish you the absolute best of luck with us. Maeve Tierney, who is the principal at St. Cronin's School in Bray, where, where Eric is a student at Force Clark. Eric, who's nine years old, born and bred, as she said, in Ireland. He has no passports, no travel documents, so he has he cannot have ever left the country. He absolutely, certainly uh, hasn't left the country. And this is chickens coming home to roost. In 2004, we had a referendum, an utterly nonsense referendum uh, to get rid of, to deal with the problem of anchor babies and maternity tourism. And because this was pushed by like what was an unpopular uh, Fianna Fáil and Progressive Democrat Party at the time, and during local and European elections, they foisted this referendum on everyone. 80%, well I think 79% of people voted in favour of it. I'm glad to say I was one of those who voted against it. It didn't make any sense. There was not a problem to solve. There was not a huge issue of maternity tourism. They had no facts and figures to back it up. In fact, I seem to remember politicians, senior cabinet ministers, talking about the fact that the problems in the health service were caused by all these maternity tourists, all these women coming eight, month, eight and a half months pregnant from, uh, from the Far East and from Nigeria and places just to give birth in Ireland. Of course, lo and behold, as soon as we have the referendum, what happens? There's still a crisis, a worsening crisis in our health system. So it obviously wasn't them. So that was a totally bogus argument. Anyway, it was completely nonsense. The law should be repealed. Eric is as Irish as anyone. Like he was born and bred here. If you're saying that he's not Irish, essentially what you're saying is that your definition of Irishness and citizenship is based on blood. Bloodlines. Like think about that. Think about what you're talking about there. Blood and soil. That kind of nonsense. You know, we heard that from a place before. Didn't work out that well. It's absolute nonsense. It's where you're born and or where you live should determine your citizenship. And Eric is Irish and we should recognise that. And other children in Eric's situation are Irish and we should recognise that. Lots of people don't recognise it though, getting in touch. James says, could he get off the air, you terrible broadcaster? Pathetic shock jock attempts. Go on, James, get off the fence. You have no mandate. No mandate. 
does he think people should vote for who should be presenting the show today? Please vote on our poll who should fill in for Kira tomorrow on Lunchtime Live. Anyway, I'm switching to BBC Radio 4, says James. Oh, he's not even listening anymore. He's listening to BBC Radio 4. I should text into BBC Radio 4 and hopefully they read out this response to James. Someone else says, how dare you call an article of our constitution which 80% of people voted for silly? You clearly don't agree with it? Then as a private citizen, lobby for change. Clearly the people of Ireland do not agree with relaxing immigration citizens citizenship rules, typical lefty agenda pushing. Well, exactly. I am a private citizen, and I'm entitled to my private opinion. I do think it was silly. I do think it was nonsense. And I do think it was repealed. It should be repealed. And I do think I'm going to say it. And I'm going to keep saying it. All right? If you have a problem with that, that's your problem. Fair play to you guys highlighting this madness. Good luck for Eric. Absolutely, I second that. Good luck to Eric. He shouldn't be going anywhere. I don't think he will. I think Charlie Flanagan would be nuts not to use his discretion in this case and allow Eric stay in the country. Uh, Brian in Dublin 12 says, deportation is the correct response to illegal immigration. Yeah, Eric didn't illegally immigrate to Ireland. Eric was born here. He was born in Hollis Street and he's never left the country. Can you not get that through your head, Brian in Dublin 12? Can you ask your guest what other pieces of legislation she doesn't recognise Nice. Drink driving, sexual assault. Ah, Brian, you weren't listening to the interview. I mean, like, listen back to it and text back in, will you? 53106. How is Eric's command of the Irish language, I wonder? Better than many other Irish people, I would guess, says Kieran. Uh, thankfully, uh, Irishness isn't defined on your ability to speak Irish. A lot of us would fail that test. Uh, Barry and Kilkenny says, deport a child when they're an infant if you feel you have to, but not when they're completely and utterly Irish nine years later. Joe and Dundum says, while I agree that nationality based on bloodline is a backward notion, the referendum was passed to support it time for another referendum you don't need another referendum you can just change the legislation in other words you don't need to put this back into the constitution putting things into the constitution is a disaster generally so just it bring it Ruth Coppinger brought forward a bill last year to do exactly this to reverse the decision just bring back that piece of legislation let's get it through the house of the Oireachtas and find people like Eric don't find themselves in this situation uh, what a way to use nine year old kids says another texter shame on that head uh, we pay her salary for all the freebies I mean, come on. Shame on that teacher for standing up for the nine-year-old kid. I don't know what... I don't get that text. Uh, Maria, I hope your caller and her supporters are paying for all these appeals. This is... Ba the, the online... The free online petition that people, like, type their name into. I don't think there's huge overruns and costs on that, uh, Maria. This is blackmail. The word is out. Come to Ireland and have a child and you're sorted. Yes, Maria, that lazy old trope about anchor babies. It wasn't true in 2004. It's certainly not true now. Fergal and Galway says, I'll help to pay for the taxi to get him to the airport. Good man, Fergal. Uh, you can send the money to care of Kieran Cudahy at News Talk. Just uh, fire it in, in cash. Please don't write a cheque. Whatever you do, uh, send it to me in cash. Uh, stay with us. Uh, lots of people still getting in touch uh, about that case in Bray, uh, where Eric Xi Young Zhu looks like he's going to be, well, there's a deportation order has been granted for him and his mother. Eric, who was born and bred in Ireland, born in Ireland in 2009, has never left the country and now is a fourth class student in school. Paul says, just because you're born in a stable doesn't make you a horse. Paul quoting that most reluctant of Irishmen, the Duke of Wellington there, good man Paul. Uh, you're some ranting little lefty, another <laughs> Irish agenda journalist. Uh, William Brick says, I can't believe some of the disgusting texts relating to Eric. Some people should be ashamed to thinking and going to bother of typing such crap. As someone else says, what is happening to this country? Eric spent his whole life here. How could his nationality be called into question? Whereas Ray in Tullamore says, uh, this crap went on with a student in a secondary school in Tullamore, in Tullamore College, but eventually common sense won out and he was not deported. Yeah, I would imagine common sense will ultimately win out in this case. I think it would be an absolute own goal uh, for Charlie Flanagan and not to use his discretion and exercise his discretion in this case and to allow Eric to remain in the country. As I said, he's nine years old, born and bred in Ireland. That makes him as Irish as you. Or actually, I wasn't even born in Ireland. You know, I was born in the UK. He's more Irish than I am, I would say, Eric. But bloodline, though, is what people want to define Irishness on, which makes me more Irish than Eric in uh, some people's eyes. I don't buy it. Uh, I think he should be staying here, as should anyone else in his position. If you're born here, you should be a citizen of the country. We shouldn't have changed that law in 2004. Five 3106 is the text number. Uh, let me know what you think. Lots of you disagreeing with me, and we'll get to some of those texts in just a few minutes' time.
the another issue that's really got people excited is Eric Xi Ying Zhu, who is the nine-year-old in Bray who's due to be deported. There's a petition to lobby the Minister for Justice to keep him in the country. Predictably, as soon as I mentioned this on Twitter, my notifications turn into an absolute cesspit from people telling me that uh, he should be deported along with all other foreign people in this country. He doesn't deserve to be here. That uh, There's a kind of a theme in it that essentially because the referendum was passed in 2004 with 80% of the people voting in favour of it, that anybody who objects to the referendum now should keep quiet and not express their opinions. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to absolutely express my opinion. It was absolute nonsense that that referendum was held in 2004. It was based on fallacies. There was not a problem of people coming here and engaging in maternity tourism. The issue was put forward by those in favour of the referendum that this was being done and it was clogging up the maternity systems and it was causing the delays in our health system in general. Of course, then when we passed the referendum, the delays got worse. So it wasn't that at all. It was a fallacy that it was based on. The arguments were hollow and now the chickens are coming home to roost. And you've got a nine-year-old kid who was born and bred in Ireland and is as Irish as anyone, regardless of what he looks like or the blood in his veins. He was born and bred in this country. That should be the test for citizenship, where you're born and or where you live. Eric is Irish. Eric shouldn't be deported. I don't think he will be. I think it would be an unbelievable own goal. Uh, it is a no-brainer. Charlie Flanagan will exercise his discretion in this regard, I have absolutely no doubt. But look, keep those texts coming in, 53106. Even the ones disagreeing with me and calling me a social justice warrior, lefty, loser, pinko, snowflake. Lots of them. They're all coming in. They're coming in on Twitter. Keep them coming. I love them. 53106. Or you can get me on Twitter. Get the show on Twitter at Lunchtime Live NT.